Live from New York, it's theCUBE. Covering theCUBE, New York City 2018. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to the live CUBE coverage here in New York City for CUBE NYC, hashtag CUBE NYC. It's the coverage of all things data, all things cloud, all things machine learning here in the big data realm. I'm John Furrier with Dave Vellante. We've got two great guests uh, from Cisco. We've got Didi, who's the Vice President of Data Center Marketing at Cisco, and Han Yang, who's the Senior Product Manager at Cisco. Guys, welcome to theCUBE. Good Thanks to be Thanks for coming Thanks on for coming again. On. Good, Good to see you. Good to see you. Thanks for having us. So obviously, one of the things that, that's come up this year at the big data show, used to be called Hadoop World, Strata Data, now it's called the, the latest name, and obviously CUBE NYC, we changed from Big Data NYC to Cube mm -hmm. NYC because there's, there's a lot more going on. We I heard hallway conversation around blockchain, cryptocurrency, Kubernetes has been set on the Cube already at least a dozen times here today. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Multi cloud. So you're seeing a, you're seeing the analytical world trying to be in a way kind of brought into the dynamics around IT infrastructure operations, mm -hmm. both cloud and on premises. So mm -hmm. interesting dynamics this year. Almost a DevOps kind of culture to analytics. This is a, a new kind of sign from this community. Yeah, yeah Your thoughts. absolutely. No, absolutely. I think, you know, data and analytics is one of those things that's it's pervasive. In every industry doesn't matter. And, you know, even at Cisco, I know we're going to talk a little more about the new AI and ML workloads, but for the last few years, we've been using AI and ML techniques to improve networking, to improve security, to improve collaboration, so it's everywhere. You mean I, internally, in your own IT? Internally, ITU. yeah, like not just in IT, in the way we're designing our network equipment, mm -hmm. right, where we're storing data that's, that's flowing through the data center, flowing through the, you know, in and out of clouds, and using that data to make better predictions for better networking, application performance, security, what have you. The first so. topic I want to talk to you guys about is, is, uh, is around the data center. Obviously, yeah. you got your data center marketing, what does that mean? It means basically that's where all the action is. Cloud obviously has been, been all the buzz, people going to the cloud, but Andy Jassy's announcement at VMworld really is a validation that we're seeing for the first time, hybrid and multi-cloud validated. Amazon announced RDS on VMware on premises. That's right. This is the first time Amazon's ever done anything of this magnitude on premises. So this is a signal from the customers voting with their wallet that on-premises is a dynamic. The data center is where the data is. That's where the you know, main footprint of IT is. That's right. This is important. And what's the impact of that dynamic of data center, where the data is, with the option for cloud, how does that impact data, machine learning, and the things that you guys see as relevant? Sure, so I'll, I'll, I'll start and Han, feel free to chime in here. So I think those boundaries between this is a data center and this is a cloud and this is a campus and this is the edge, I think those boundaries are, are going away. Just like, like you said, data center is where the data is. And it's the ability of our customers to be able to capture that data, process it, curate it, and use it for insights to take decision locally, um, you know, converts, uh, you know, a drone is a data center that flies and a boat is a data center that floats, right? So that, that and a cloud is a data center that no one sees. <laughs> that's right, that's right. So th those boundaries are, are going away. We, yeah. we at Cisco um, see this as, as a continuum. It's the edge cloud continuum. And so, um, and the edge is exploding, right? There's just more and more devices and these devices are cranking out more data than ever before. And like I said, it's the ability of our customers to harness that data to make more meaningful decisions. So, Cisco's take on this is, is the new architectural approach, right? And it starts with the network, because the network is the one piece that connects everything. Every, every device, every edge, every individual, every cloud. And there's a lot of data within the network uh, which we're using to make better decisions. What's interesting, you know, I've been pretty close to Cisco over the years, since 95 time frame. I've had hundreds of meetings, some technical, some kind of business. Yeah. But I've heard that term, edge of the network, many times over the years. This is not a new concept to Cisco. Mm -hmm. I mean, edge of the network actually means something in Cisco parlance. Right. The edge of the network. Yeah. That the packets are moving around. So again, this is not a new idea for Cisco. It's just materialized itself in a new way. It's not, but what's happening is the edge is just now generating so much data. 
And if you can use that data, you know, convert it into insight and make decisions, that's the exciting thing. And that's why this whole um, thing about machine learning and artificial intelligence, it's the data that's being generated by these cameras, these sensors, these, you know, so that's what is, is really, really interesting. And if, and if, go ahead, please. One of our own studies pointed out that by 2021, there'll be 847 zeta bytes of information out there but only 1.3 zeta byte will actually ever make it back to the data center. That just right. means an opportunity for analytics at the edge to make sense of that information before it ever makes it home. Wait, what were those numbers again? It was <laughs> like, I think it's like 847 zeta byte of information. And, 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 how, what, and what, what, how much makes it back? About 1.3. Yeah, there you go. So, so a huge compression. That confirms your research data. Well, yeah, I mean, we've been saying for a while now that most of the data is going to stay yeah. at the edge. There's no reason to move it back. The economics aren't supported. The latency doesn't make sense. The network sense. cost alone, it's going to kill there. you. That's right. And, and I think you really want to make you want to collect it, you want to clean it, and you want to mm -hmm. correlate it before you ever sending it back. Right? Otherwise, sending that information of useless information, that status is wonderful. Well, that's not very <laughs> valuable, right? And 99.9%, .9 things are going well. Right? Temperature hasn't changed. <laughs> that, that is, you hope that's going well, right? And if, if it really goes wrong, well, that's when you want to alert or send in more information. Well, how, how did it go bad? Why did it go bad? Those are the more insightful things mm -hmm. that you want to send back. And you know, this is just not just for IOT. I mean, cat pictures moving between campuses cost money too, so why don't you just That's keep right. them local, right? So, but these are concepts of networking. This is what I want to get into my point too. You guys got some new announcements around mm -hmm. UCS and some of the hardware and the gear and the software. What are some of the new announcements that you're announcing here in New York? And what does it mean for customers? Because they want to know not only speeds and feeds, it's a software-driven world. How does the software relate? Is it how does the gear work? What's the management look like? Where's the control plane? Where's the management plane? Give us all the data. I think the biggest issue starts with this, right? Data scientists, they have their task is to explore different data sources, find out the value, right? But at the same time, IT is somewhat lagging behind, right? Because as the data scientists go from data source A to data source B, it could be three petabytes of difference. Well, IT's like three petabytes, and you, that's only from Monday through Wednesday. Well, that's a huge infrastructure requirement change. Mm -hmm. So Cisco's way to help the customer is to make sure that we're able to come out with blueprints. Blueprints enabling the IT teams to scale so that the data scientists can work beyond their own laptop as they work through the petabytes of data that's coming in from all these different sources, they're able to collaborate well together and make sense of that information. And only by scaling, by with IT helping the data scientists to work to scale, that's the only way they can succeed. So that's why we announced a new server. It's called a C480 ML. Happens to have eight GPUs from NVIDIA inside, helping customers that want to do that deep learning kind of capabilities. What are some of the use cases of these this product? So it's got some, it's got new data capabilities. What are some of the, the impacts? Well, so, I mean, some of the things that Han just mentioned, for me, I think the biggest differentiation in our solution is things that we've put around the box, right? So, the management layer, right? I mean, this is not going to be one server and one data center. It's going to be multiple of them. You're never going to have one data center. You're going to have multiple data centers. And we've got a really cool management tool called Intersight, and this is supported in Intersight day one. And Intersight also uses machine learning you know, techniques to look at data from multiple you know, data centers. Uh, and that's really where the innovation is, because honestly, I think every vendor is going to bend sheet metal around the latest chipsets, okay? And we're, we've done the same, but the real differentiation is sort of how we manage it, how we use that data for more meaningful insights. I think that's where some of our uh, Can you add some color is. to that in terms of just infrastructure for AI and ML? Um, how is it different than sort of traditional infrastructure? So is the management different? Is the, you know, the sheet metal is not different, you're saying, but, but what are some of those nuances that we should understand? I think especially for deep learning, multiple beat scientists you know, around the world have pointed out that if you're able to use GPUs, they're able to run the deep learning frameworks faster by roughly two orders of magnitude. Right? So that's part of the reason why, from infrastructure perspective, we wanted to bring in that GPUs. But for the IT teams, we didn't want them to just add yet another infrastructure silo just to support AI or ML, right? So therefore, we wanted to make sure that it fits in within a UCS managed unified architecture, enabling the IT teams to scale 
but without adding more infrastructures and silos just for that new workload, right? By having that unified architecture, it helps the IT to be more efficient and at the same time, in better support of the data scientists. The other thing I would add is sort of again, the things around the box, right? I mean, mm -hmm. look, this industry is still pretty nascent. There's lots of startups, there's lots of different mm -hmm. you know, solutions. And um, when we build a server like this, we don't just build the server and just toss it over the fence to the customer and say, figure it out. No, we've done validated design guides, right? With Google's, with, uh, with some of the leading you know, vendors in the space to make sure everything works as, as we say it would. And so it's all of those integrations, those partnerships, all the way through our systems integrators mm -hmm. to really understand a customer's AI and ML environment and yeah. to fine tune it for their environment. So is that really where a lot of the innovation comes from? Is that sort of doing that hard work to say, yes, it's going to be a solution, it's going to work in this environment, here's what you have to do to ensure you know, best practice, et cetera? Is that, is that right? So I think some of our blueprints or, or validated designs mm -hmm. is basically enabling the IT team to scale. Scale their stores, scale, scale their CPU, scale mm -hmm. their GPU, and scale their network. But do it in a way so that we work with partners like Hortonworks or Cloudera, right. so that they're able to take advantage of the data lake, but and adding in the GPU so they're able to do the deep learning with TensorFlow, with PyTorch, or wh whatever curated deep learning framework that data scientists need to be able to get value out of the, the, those multiple data sources. So these are the kind of solutions that we're putting together, making sure our customers are able to get to that business outcome sooner and faster, not just a... Right. So there's innovation at all altitudes, so, right? So there's the hardware, there's the integrations, there's the management, so it's, it's innovation. So not to go too much into the weeds, but I'm curious, as you, as you introduce these al al alternate processing units, yeah. what is the relationship between sort of traditional CPUs and these, these GPUs? Are you managing them differently, kind of communicating somehow, or are they sort of fenced off architecturally? I wonder if you could describe that. We actually want it to be integrated, because by having it separated and fenced off, well, that's a IT infrastructure silo, that you're not going to have the same security policy or the storage mechanisms. We want it to be unified so that it's easier on the IT teams to support the data scientist. Right? So therefore, um, the new latest software, Hadoop software, is able to manage both CPUs and GPUs, mm -hmm. as well as having Hadoop file system. Those are the solutions that we're putting forth so that our IT folks can scale, our data scientists can succeed. So IT is managing a logical block. That's right. And even for, for, for things like inventory management or you know, going back and adding patches in the event of some security event, it's so much better to have like one integrated system um, rather than yeah. silos of management which we, which we see in the industry. So the hard news is, is basically UCS for AI and, and ML workloads? That's right. right. This is our first <coughs> server custom build, ground up, to support these deep learning, machine learning workloads. We partnered with NVIDIA, with Google. We announced it earlier this week and uh, uh, the phone is ringing constantly. I don't want to say God box, <laughs> I just said it. But this is basically <laughs> the, the, the power tool for deep learning. Absolutely. That's how you guys see it. Absolutely. All right, well great. Thanks for coming on, appreciate it. Good to see you guys at Cisco. Again, deep learning, uh, dedicated technology around the box, not just the box itself. That's right. Ecosystem, NVIDIA, good call. Those guys really get the hot GPUs out there. Um, so those guys last night, great success they're having. Mm -hmm. um, they're a key partner with you guys. Absolutely. Uh, who are the who else is partnering real quick before we end the segment? Just We've get been a quick partnering plug with the partner. software side. We've partnered with folks like Anaconda, with their Anaconda Enterprise, which uh, data science love to use as their Python mm -hmm. uh, data science framework. We've been working with Google with their Kubeflow, which is an open source project integrating TensorFlow on top of Kubernetes. And of course, we've been working with folks like Cloudera as well as Hortonworks to access yeah. the data lake that from, from a big data perspective. Yeah, I know you guys didn't get a lot of credit at Google Cloud. We, we were certainly amplifying it. You guys were co-developing the Google Cloud service with uh, Google, I know they had, were announcing it. You guys had uh, Chuck on stage there with Diane Green, so it was pretty oh, positive. Yeah. Yep. Good integration with Google, looking Absolutely. pretty good there. Absolutely. Good partner, great. Thanks for coming on theCUBE, thanks for appreciate the Thank you. commentary. Just go here on theCUBE. We're in New York City for CUBE NYC. This is where the world of data is converging in with IT infrastructure, developers, operators, all running analytics for the future of business. We'll be back with more coverage after this short break.